Hey, yo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another Big Code Hours video. Uh, it's been a little bit since my last video, but we're back. Uh, I was busy, got a new laptop that I will be showing you guys at some point. Really cool. Uh, also, thank you. We're up to 75 subscribers, so you guys are awesome. I uh, appreciate all of you, and let's get into this video. So we're gonna be doing kind of like an Nmap scanner. So if you've ever seen Nmap, essentially like you have a host. Um, so let's say we have like, I don't know, some hosts like 121.23.14. I don't know, whatever, right? So let's say we have this IP address. You can actually scan it to see like what ports um, are being used by that IP. Um, there's lots of things you can then do with those ports. You can connect to the port sometimes. Um, but anyways, there's lots of stuff you can do. If you don't know what MMP is, you can like look it up and just search it. But essentially we're gonna be doing a port scanner. I give it an IP and it gives you the ports that are open on that. So of course, like this is for ethical purposes only. Just showing you guys how to like uh, do port scanning. Frankly, there's like not really a ton you can do with that unethically, but a lot of times you can use it to actually check if something's working on your computer or figure out what's going on. So let's hop into it. So first thing we're gonna do is import some modules. So um, we're gonna import sys because we're gonna go ahead and make this an actual like uh, program. So we're gonna say if, so if you guys don't know, you can like input uh, command line items through the command line. So you could say the name of your program, right? You're running the name of your program, dash, H and then the IP address, right? And it's gonna take that as the host because you said the command dash, dash H and then the host. So we're gonna say if the length of sys dot uh, argv. So argv is the arguments that come through the command line. So if that is uh, greater than one, um, yeah, cause so if it's greater than one, it'll actually like accept it, I think is how that works. If it's not greater than one, then the argv actually won't have anything in it at all. So yeah, so then we can just do like a little uh, for loop here. So for um, args and sys.argv, um, let's say if the arg equals dash h, let's say for arg. So if, if arg equals dash h, then we're gonna set target, target equals um, sys.argv, um, and then we're gonna say, uh, what would we would say, sys.argv. So then this is getting the index of the argument, so the dash h argument, and then adding one, right? So we're gonna be writing something, and we're gonna say blah, 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 dash uh, H and then our host, right? And then, so essentially it's gonna get the dash H and then it's gonna say, okay, grab the next index after that and that'll be your target, right? So that's right there. And then we're also gonna add something onto this target. So we're gonna use something called socket, which is a Python built-in module that allows you to like connect to IP addresses and stuff like that. So get, we're gonna say get host uh, by name. So we'll grab it by the IP address and then we'll wanna import socket all right so that's going to get the socket and then we're going to do some cool things here so we're going to say if arg equals um dash uh pr so let's say that's port range then we're going to say port range equals um we'll just copy and paste this right here so grab the index after that pr and that will be our port range and let's make that an integer because we'll want that to be an integer down the road all right, let's also say if arg equals uh, port. So if we would just want to check one port and see if that port's open, then we can just do that. Say port, and then we'll do the same thing here. Awesome. And then let's set these, let's initialize these. Uh, target equals nothing. And then port range equals nothing. And then or equals nothing. I'll initialize them up here actually. That'd be better. Alrighty, awesome. Uh, so we'll say else print valid configuration. All right, so let's get started. So um, let's make like a just a little banner or something, make this look kind of cool. So let's do like 
uh, if you want, if you didn't know in Python, you can say like uh, a character times any number and it'll print it out that many times. So that's kind of a cool shortcut. So let's say initiating port sniff on, um, let's say host and let's say our target. Okay, I don't know what's doing that. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's get into it. So we're gonna start by just doing the, if it's only one port, so if port, so if that port uh, value is not empty, that means they specified, oh, let's do dash here, sorry. Missed that, you want a dash here, because that's just what we'll do. I mean, you can name this anything you want, but we're gonna name it dash port. So let's say they just wanna do one singular port. Um, we can go ahead and say, uh, so if port, and then we'll want to do s equals socket, and look at my notes here to actually remember all these things. So you can just copy um, what I'm typing in. I don't necessarily know all the ins and outs of uh, how this works, but essentially this starts a socket connection on your machine. And uh, through that, you're able to like connect to uh, addresses and all kinds of stuff, which is kind of cool. But I don't know what those variables mean. I just know that that's like the uh, that's like how you write it. So then we gotta set something called set uh, default timeout. So it's kind of like dumb. Um, I don't know why socket works like this necessarily. But if you're wanting, I mean, it actually it makes sense. I guess for our purposes, we're using socket in a different way than it was intended. I guess. But you essentially will want to set this to like point zero 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 one um, because if you don't then it's gonna be super slow to like sniff through. It's still kind of slow, which is annoying, but um, well, it's not that slow. For You can sniff 5,000 ports in like, I don't know, a minute. So it's not like that slow, but there's probably more efficient ways to do it, but this is probably one of the more simple ways. But set that default just down like kind of low. Um, that way, it, and if you put like a bunch more zeros, it's not gonna make a difference. So I'd say put, I don't know, you can even put like three. I don't even think it goes uh, lower than like 0.1 or something when I was testing it, but that'll make it go faster for sure. So let's do our result. Um, it's gonna equal our socket, and then we're gonna try to um, connect. So we're gonna go ahead and use this command, which will connect to the target. And then we're putting this in a tuple right here, just so you know. So target, and then the port. And then we're going to say if result equals zero. So that means if it actually makes a connection, that's how uh, this, it'll return zero if it has established a connection there. And we'll want to print, uh, we could say port blank. Uh, yeah, sure, open. And then we'll just say dot format and then uh, the port. So if you don't know, dot format will essentially just insert in these brackets, whatever you put in the dot format in the order that you put it in. Okay, and then we'll want to close the connection. So s dot close, uh, close that socket connection. Um, cool. And then so if port, so if the port is specified, and so if this isn't empty because they just want to do one port, then we go ahead and run that one port and we check that. Um, otherwise, we're gonna do a for loop. So we're gonna say for port and a range, and we'll go from one to, um, and the range is just gonna be from one to whatever. You can make it more complex and do your own specific range if you wanted to. For my purposes, we're not gonna do that, so we're just gonna say port uh, range, and put that in there like that, and then essentially we're just gonna copy and paste what we have right here. It's gonna be the exact same thing, except for we're just going through a port range, right? So now instead of port being a, a variable and just using it once, we're grabbing each um, port from within the port range, right? Um, yeah, so also let me make this a little bit bigger in case you guys couldn't see that already. Sorry if it was small, but you know. So anyways, uh, let's keep going. <laughs> so uh, that's pretty much actually it, I think. We could, we could add some try and accept clauses in here if we wanted to. Um, there's a lot of actually extra fancy stuff that you could do with this, but that's really all that there is to it. So again, I can walk you through it again. So essentially, we're pulling in arguments from the command line. Uh, each of these represents a specific command. So dash H will be followed by an IP address. It'll pull that in and set target equal to the IP. Uh, dash PR will set um, 
the port range for our cases. Um, so dash PR and then 5,000, it'll do the first 5,000 ports, so one through 5,000. And then dash port will just do a specific port. One of the reasons why I did dash port is because, and I'll show you in this video, iPhones, there's a port that's, uh, I think, all, like always open. It's like the iPhone sync port, but it's port like 62,000 something. So if you were to do a port range, it's gonna take you a while because you're looping through one through 60 something thousand, you know what I mean, to get to it. Um, that, would, that would just take a while. So instead, I'm gonna show you how you can just pop in that one singular port and um, we'll test it out and see if we can get that to show us if it's open or not. So, um, so let's go ahead and run this. It's not gonna work when I run it because we have to run it through the command line. Okay, so. Ignore that. So essentially, like the reason why it's doing that is because uh, we have to grab this whole item the way that we've set it up. If you wanted to put it like on Linux or something, that way you're not run like for, since I'm doing it on um, since I'm doing it on like my Windows machine and Visual Studio Code, I'm gonna have to enter like the entire address to Python, the entire address to my file. I guess I could change that and make it not be like that, but well, actually. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go, just go ahead and just so that it's easier for you guys and it's not like confusing or something. Okay, so now that we're in here. Yeah, that's easy enough, right? <laughs> okay, so now we'll run it like this. So say dash H and let's do our local host 127.0.0.1. That's always your local host. And then let's do a port range. So let's do minus port range and let's do 5,000. Let's run it. So initiating port sniff on host 127.0.0.1. So port 135 is open. Um, if you're on Windows, that will probably be open for you too, I assume. Port 445 is open. Again, I don't know what these ports necessarily go to. Um, Port 80, right, is your internet port. Port 443 is your secure um, internet protocol port. Um, port 1434, no idea what that's going to. <laughs> Essentially, though, like sometimes ports can represent vulnerabilities in a system, right? So if there's a certain port open on a machine, that means that that port might be vulnerable to you connecting to it and being able to hack into it. So it's important to know what imports are, or what ports are open on your machine. And if you have like a server or something, you can always like, I know one time I used Nmap on a server to see like, if a port was working or not, it could be helpful for that as well. So again, it's not the fastest. Adding that 0 0.0001 to the set default timeout helps us. So there is another port, port 3648 is also open. And we can let it run through this. I don't think there's gonna be any more than that. So I'm just stopping it manually. But as you can see, it found those ports and they were open. I wanna show you guys something real quick. So watch if we start Apache. And if we start MySQL, so I'm using XAMPP. Essentially, this is a control panel to start uh, to start like some programs. So Apache is like an internet. Uh, you can run PHP on it through the internet, through your browser, through your local host. And MySQL, again, I don't need to explain these. Essentially, I'm now running these programs on these ports. So just to show you like that this works. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start. Um, Port sniff. So now port 80 is open, right? That's because I just started this program that's running on port 80 and port 443. So port 443, it got that as well. And it'll also get port, uh, what is this? 3306, but no need to wait around for that. As you can see, like it works. So it's gonna find all the open ports on your machine. You can go ahead and stop this. But that's kind of cool. But let's go ahead and do it on my phone. <laughs> so let's try our dash port command and let me pull this up so the port is uh six two zero seven eight so that's the port for iphone sync i think on your iphone um then i'm about to just show my phone's ip address but this is a private network so you couldn't connect to it anyways <laughs> you would have to know my router's address well, you'd have to know actually my ISP and stuff, but that's okay. Anyways, 202.1. Again, you won't be able to do anything with this IP address, so don't even try. <laughs> um, okay, so let's do it. go ahead and do a scan. Okay, so obviously scanning one port is going to be really fast, but as you can see, the port was open. Um, it says it right there. We could scan port 22. 
I don't know if that would be open. No, it's not. Um, yeah, I don't know what other ports are open on the iPhone. I'm sure there's some other ones by default that are open, but um, but yeah. So essentially that's how you can make your own kind of like Nmap port scanner. Um, it's really simple because essentially it just tries to create a socket connection. And then if it can make one to that port, then it tells you, hey, it's open, it's available. So yeah, really simple. Um, I'll have this code up on my GitHub and you guys can go ahead and look at it. But appreciate if you watch, stay to the end of the video, appreciate you watching. Uh, please let me know any more video ideas, any questions, any comments. Feel free to subscribe and to like, of course. And yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in with me and hope you like the video. See you guys later.